Okay, so back to the role of the glutes and hams, quads and calves. I've mentioned several times already that what everyone typically tells me they think these muscles do is simply push the body forward when we run. And I have this illustrated with a white horizontal arrow as shown. Now, I know some of the more astute people on this subject like to talk about there also being a vertical component to this pushing force portrayed by this red arrow. And yes, they are correct. There are both horizontal and vertical components to this force and the vertical component is necessary to help launch us off the ground. However, the way I am using the phrase push the body forward in this video takes both of these directional forces into account. And so it's going to be much easier for you to follow what I have to say if I simply show the net result of these two with just one horizontal white arrow. So keep that in mind. Now, with regards to this pushing force coming from her right leg, I want you to imagine for a moment, this is the only force acting on her body. So nothing else is taking place. The other leg isn't involved and neither are her arms. And if it was the only force, do you think the effect of it would be to simply push her entire body straight ahead? Or do you think there might also be some additional reaction? Well, before you answer that, consider this. What if we just slid this same force over to a place, say, directly behind her midline like this? Do you think it would have the same effect on her body as the one we just showed you behind her right hip? And if not, what would be different? The answer is no. The force acting directly behind her midline, seen here, would not have the same effect on her body as the one behind her right hip, seen here. And the difference would be this midline force, once again seen here, could only propel her body straight ahead because her center of gravity falls along this line and so she couldn't go any direction other than straight as seen by these additional arrows. And this is similar to the force applied to the central axis of a clock like I showed you earlier where no rotation or torque could be produced. And hopefully you understood that since the same principle is being applied here. So a force being transmitted through the hip joint when she is running which is several inches away from her midline is different and would not only push her body forward, but would also cause her body to twist or rotate. It would have to because again, it does not fall along the midline where her center of gravity is. So if she does rotate, the question then is which direction would it be clockwise or counterclockwise to help you see this better. Let's look at this from above on our male athlete. Now the same force on our female athlete, pushing through her right hip joint can also be shown on our male athlete here. And as it comes in contact with the vertical line, now representing the level of his hips, which I will go ahead and change the entire line to look more like the hands of a clock for no other reason than I want you to be able to relate this concept of rotation to something you should already be familiar with. That of course being an actual clock. So as the force comes in contact with this line, it will cause it to rotate in the what direction? Do you care to take a guess? If you said counterclockwise, then congratulations, you are correct. And let's show it by the direction of this arrow. This is the very definition of the word torque, a force. In this case, that being the one created by the glutes and hams, quads and calves, acting on an object, that being the hip joint, that causes it to rotate around a central axis that being the midline of the body. And now let's go ahead and place the corresponding counterclockwise arrow showing this torque on our female athlete. And hopefully now you can start to visualize it taking place a little better on her. So there you have it. The role of the glutes and hams, quads and calves is not only to provide a pushing force forward, like many of you may have just assumed that's all they ever did, but to also provide a rotational force or torque across the front of the body which is something I'm quite certain none of you have ever considered before. Now, before moving on to the next torque, I would imagine you already have a few questions for me from what we just covered. And so I want to assure you that not only am I aware of most of the ones that people have asked me at this point in the past, but also I have found that the best way to answer those questions was simply by showing the rest of these torques in action along with their relationships with each other. And so if you just bear with me here, I am very confident that most of the questions you have now, as well as the ones that are likely to come up, 
will be answered in due time throughout the remainder of this video series. And all of this will be so much easier to understand and appreciate than you could ever imagine at this time, regardless of your age or background. All right, that's going to do it for this video. You can access the link to the next part in this series, as well as all 12 parts in the description below. Now, before I go, I wanna say that if you liked my video, then please click the like button, feel free to share it wherever you want, and leave me a question or comment as I'll be sure to get to it as soon as possible. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and follow Athletic Quickness on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to stay up to date on all of our speed training tips, articles, and exercises. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.